people that rent out their personal property as a service, Lyft Uber, Airbnb, etc. What is your customer horror story? Lyft driver here, got pulled out of my car at gunpoint by like 20 cops because the guys I picked up matched the description of some guys who had stolen a car, it wasn't them. Ran an Airbnb for a year. Four clean cut frat boys had a 7 day stay. When they checked out I sent my usual hope you enjoyed your trip text. And they responded that the toilet hadn't been working for their stay. They could have told me this on day 1. On hour 1. Instead they used the toilet for a full week. There was a mountain of poop. A mountain. A. Mountain. I took the toilet tank lid off. The chain had come loose. Four men in their 20s didn't know how to attach the toilet tank chain. Forever and ever, for the rest of my life, I will feel smart, even though I'm the dummy who had to shovel poop mountain into contractor bags. Last week a woman who was fully vetted by a BNB rented my house for what turned out to be a Halloween party. She lied about her intentions, even when I spoke to her over the phone. In just a few hours, they did over $3,000 in damage, and the police evicted 150 people for my 1,200 square featuring home. It was only broken up by police because there was a gun shooting that landed somebody in the hospital. All this in a quiet residential neighborhood that is part of a golf resort, in a city that is not especially known for crime. I'm sure the damage would have been far worse if the police hadn't come because of the gunshots. Thank god nobody was killed. Good times. I drive for Uber Lyft as my sole means of income right now. It's never a dull moment. I've done about 1600 rides with Uber and close to 1000 with Lyft in one year. Most passengers are awesome. I never have issues. Even with drunk people. One night though this drunk girl and her drunk friends get in the car and are acting really obnoxious. I even joined in the banter a little bit to keep the ride fun. Going down a dangerous road at about 45 miles per hour the girl sitting behind me reaches forward and covers my eyes and pulls my head back against the headrest, jokingly saying something about what time is it without looking. Game over. I was P. Lucky for them we weren't far from their destination otherwise I would have left them on the side of the road. I pulled over after dropping them off and left a lengthy complaint with Lyft about a dangerous passenger. Holy frick what an idiot. I missed this, but when I drove Uber I picked up 5 dudes who were going bar hopping. The guy sitting in the middle center seat is barely keeping his head up, but we got a party ray deposit bin in the back, so we're good. No we're not. The smell hits me about 5 minutes out from the bar. His friends immediately diagnose the issue. Lucas. Goddammit. Again. Lucas had explosively crap his pants. We suffered together the final stanky 3 blocks and I dropped them off. They pulled their buddy out and everyone walked into the bar, seemingly unfazed. Filed the cleaning, quit Uber the next week. They pulled their buddy out and everyone walked into the bar, seemingly unfazed. So classy. A friend had their car on jet around. Got it back and second gear was gone. GPS tracking showed it at over 120 miles per hour multiple times, was dirty and smelled like weed. In fairness, jet around got the transmission fixed and they were all squared up after but that car is no longer on jet around. I used to rent a property in Putoroko on a year lease basis. My last renters in 2012 left 2 months before their lease was up and took all the appliances. Fridge, stove, microwave, dishwasher, even the fricking ceiling fans. After a year long case court I won and didn't get a single penny. They said they were broke. They went to jail and I lost a whole year of rent plus almost 6k in damages. Never again. Jesus. This entire thread has made me absolutely determined to never Uber Air BNB or anything. I used to drive for Uber Lyft. Had some bad ones. Usually the very drunk. But for the most part everything was great and went very smoothly. My horror story came from a ride I gave off the books as it were. Pulled up to the pickup location. Girl comes out. The one who ordered the ride. And explains she ordered it for her friend. The card connected to the account has no money on it but she offers me $20 for the ride in cash. Whatever. I needed the money and the spot she said her friend needed to go was relatively close. Would have been well under $20 if it was charged through the app. I agree and she signals to this very tall guy who walks down from the porch. Red flags were already going off. This guy gets in the back and we take off. 
I consider myself a pretty social and outgoing person and soon into the ride the sky and I are talking about all sorts of things from basketball to movies as well as our destined for traffic in the large city we live in. 5 minutes or so of this and he brings up his love for firearms. Next red flag, asks if I own any. I don't and inform him as such. He then proceeds to pull out two handguns from his backpack, explaining how he just picked them up the other day and loves them, even flashes them to me in the rear view mirror. I'm fully freaking out internally but I keep my cool as we're nearing the destination. As we pull up to this guy's house, he explains that he is a drug dealer and that he really enjoyed our conversation and thinks I'd make a great driver for him as he makes his drops. I explained that I'm not interested but thanked him for the compliment. Unfortunately he was fairly insistent I start working for him and would not exit the car till I gave him my phone number. He somehow bought the fake number I gave him and told me he'd call me soon. As soon as he was out of my car I took off. That was one of the last nights I drove for Uber Lyft. If the number I randomly gave out actually belongs to anyone, I apologize if you got a late night call from Tim. Tim Zuber fast drug delivery. Picked up a guy in Hollywood at 1am who wanted a lift to the valley. I became increasingly concerned as we drove up into the hills. He told me to turn into a completely dark nature reserve. He told me that his girlfriend was a land use manager for the park and he was going to stay with her overnight. We drove through the dark winding roads of Fryman Canyon, and I honestly thought he was going to kill me. There was also a car following us. Turned out, he was right. His girlfriend did live out there, and I wasn't harassed at all. The car following us was a park ranger wondering what the heck I was doing out there so late. I'm glad the park ranger was there though just in case things went south. Some little crap shot BBs through one of our bathroom doors. We know which family did it too, but they denied it and we have no proof. Those parents knew dang well their kid did it too. I'll never understand why they couldn't act like adults and own up to it. Question. I'll never understand why they couldn't act like adults and own up to it. Answer. Dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign. Not a horror story but frustrating. I have an airbnb rental in a small ski town. One of our first guests was a single guy who brought his she edu. He stayed for one night and left a one star review saying there was no silverware in the house. There's literally like 40 of everything. The power went out across half the mountain due to an ice storm and he was bored. And finally that he was disappointed that the fridge wasn't stocked. Clearly says on our listing that food and drink are not provided. But here's the kicker. The next guests that came in went to clean some mud they thought they tracked into the house. Ended up being dog crap from the Ashat Sheeti Zedu. Yep and the good thing about airbnb is that you can zero star rate that inconsiderate Ashat so future renters don't have to deal with his crap. Literally. This wasn't me personally, but I helped my boss manage her airbnb. First off. She was running it illegally. The city I live in, a lot of apartment buildings don't allow it. Anyways, this girl rented it out for a week in December last year. My boss is out of the country and gets this call that her fob has been deactivated due to damage to the property and the fact that a brothel was being run out of her apartment. This woman and her friend were literally freaking dudes all over this place. One guy got mad, left and punched a picture in the foyer which was caught on camera. I got a call to be on standby, but the police went in and did their thing. There was baby wipes, used condoms everywhere, literally semen everywhere. She got a pretty hefty fine for the damage and also for the fact she was using airbnb to rent out her condo. I rent out a rustic cabin on my property. The setting is really nice and serene beside a creek and there's a cedar sauna on the property as well. But the cabin is small. There's a queen bed in the loft and a double futon on the main floor and its dimensions are roughly 12 feet by 10 feet so I tell people the max is 4 people per night. Well, this young guy messages me and asks me if they can have 7. Promises they'll be really respectful and clean. And I work with someone the guy knows so I cave. They left the place kind of clean, but burned a hole in the hardwood floor, and broke the handle off the sliding glass door. Turns out, with that many people cooking etc, the humidity in winter caused some moisture condensation on the track, which subsequently froze, and instead of just leaving it and letting me know, he forced the door closed, breaking the handle in the process. Not an easy featuring, hurt his hand as well. 
He was sure to let me know. Code for don't take my damage deposit or I'll sue you. You can bet I never let more than 4 in there now. I drive for Uber. I got a pickup for one of the satellite buildings of a local hospital. No big, I've picked up and dropped off people there before and I had never had an issue. As it turns out, the department I was picking up from was the rehab clinic for the area. As you may or may not know, there's a 5 minute wait time from the moment we arrive. App determines it, not us. To the moment when the driver can simply cancel and collect the cancellation fee. For obvious reasons, we tend to keep a sharp eye on the clock. The time was getting close to the 5 minute mark when I got a text. A nurse or doctor on the inside was using Uber to transfer a patient. Okay, still no big, I guess. About 10 seconds later, some bedraggled guy comes out a bit unsteadily and asks if I'm here for doctor. I said yes, and he said that he was the transfer. He got in, and I started the trip to discover that the trip was for 70 miles away to another rehab clinic. Now, long trips are my jam. I get paid well for them. They are easier and less stressful than a bunch of little trips. So I was pleased. Not 2 minutes into the trip, he was like hey man I don't really want to go there take me over there instead. He wasn't asking, he was telling. Already, I'm uncomfortable and decided it's easier to just do what this guy wants rather than stick to the requested destination. He can't pick out exactly which way he wants me to go. So just starts telling me to turn onto random streets. Some point during this adventure, he asks me how much cash I had on me. Red flags all around now. I tell him I don't really carry cash. He sighs. Says I was really hoping for at least $15. And pulls out a small knife. Frick. So now I'm panicking and pulling out my wallet at the next red light. I had $5 from someone who tipped me earlier that day, but nothing else. He took the bill and told me to keep going. Christ, I'm shaking a little just telling the story. We arrive at what I assume is a drug house. Guy tells me to wait for him and gets out of the car. I can only assume that he was desperate for his next hit or whatever and so didn't really think that through. I shut and locked the door and took off as soon as he was across the street. Went home. Reported it to Uber. I didn't file a police report because it was only $5. And Uber said they'd take care of it. I don't really believe it, but I didn't really want to deal with anything else that day anyway. You should have contacted the doctor's office and made a huge stink. Not so much personal property as it is my experience working in event planning. There were customers who would rent our equipment and treat it as if it were their own. Then there were people who out and out abused our stuff. The worst experience that comes to mind had to do with a caterer whom had consistently rented from us. He was hired for a wedding reception on a ship and asked us for wine glasses, plates, linens, and the like. After that weekend, we received less than half of our stuff back or it was broken. The wine glasses were thrown into the box they were delivered in and most of those were destroyed. The same went for the plates, but we did recover most of the linens. Not all. My boss told the caterer he was going to be charged for the broken glasses and plates and he immediately assumed no fault. Well dude, don't call us frauds when you sign a contract clearly stating that you agree to reimburse us for damages. He tried disputing it with his credit card company, but we won out. Treat it as if it were their own. Then there were people who out and out abused our stuff. The two are not necessarily mutually exclusive. My boss bought the house behind mine and turned it into an Airbnb rental. Once some people rented it and just gave it to their teenagers who threw a Riga. I started hearing lots of car doors slamming and hearing kids walking right past our windows. 20 featuring from the sidewalk. So cutting in our yard. It got insane fast and apparently the cops just made all the kids leave and told my boss to throw away all the drugs and alcohol they left behind. I had to clean up a lot from my yard too. Shortly after that someone rented it and threw a wedding in the house and basically destroyed it. They dumped pots of food everywhere and he had to spend thousands of dollars cleaning it. They burned carpets and the whole place stank. Last I heard he was still renting places out. Cops just made all the kids leave and told my boss to throw away all the drugs and alcohol they left behind. At least the cops seem pretty chill. Surprised they didn't collect all the drugs themselves and destroy them lol. Got evicted with no late payments or any problems with landlord from rental house because he wanted to appeal to college students. Rents to two roomies. They set up a MH lab. I can't remember which. 
and sell hard drugs until they get caught by police in drug bust. The building is condemned until it can be fully restored nearly 5 or 6 years later. No one can persuade me karma doesn't exist. It was a M lab. I rented out a newly remodeled home after getting married. I used renters warehouse as a property manager. They found tenants immediately and the move in was painless. Two weeks later, things started to go south. First a toilet broke, then another toilet broke, then a pipe disconnected. The rate of failures were occurring so fast that my $65 home warranty trade calls were exceeding my income from the property. One month later, my pool guy sends a text, something doesn't look right at your house, no power. I contacted the property manager to verify rent was paid, it was not. I requested a 24 hour inspection to view the property. When I arrived, it was worse than I could imagine. There were holes in the interior and exterior walls. Someone walked around the house with a can of paint and put a postcard sized amount of paint on every single wall. They stole the basketball hoop. They marked every drawer and closet. They gouged the door frames. Irrigation lines were cut. Almost every plant outside was dead. In the end, everything worked out. Although there was almost $10,000 in damage and unpaid rent, I was able to find renters on my own that agreed to paint and repair the property in exchange for one month's rent and 50% off all deposits. They post everything on Facebook and it looks fantastic. Late to this party, a friend of mine drives for Uber and recently rolled up to a couple of people covered head to toe in blood. Turns out they had just come from a gua show and were on the business end of the blood cannon. So it was fake blood, but to their utter disbelief they were still denied service. I was going to a horror show once where I came out with fake blood over me, but I made sure to pack towels and a sheet and texted the lift driver before she got there about the situation. I also gave a nice tip, you got a plan ahead for that stuff. Single horror story, multiple issues. I own and rent out 4 different houses, at the same time, everything below happened, broken down by different properties, a tenant son got out of prison, didn't know the son was even a troublemaker, said son is invited to live with my tenant, who was excellent, son sold narcotics to undercover agent out of my property, the city was threatening to seize the property, ended up evicting long term, great tenants to get city to leave me alone. B long term tenant lost their jobs, C lady died, D tenant said to me I am going to live here, and I am not going to pay you, talked with lawyer, and he said laws are in her favor, gave advice to drive her out, was a 3 month process, but she left, TLDR, 4 houses, 0 income, and 1 property threatened to be seized for narcotic trafficking, tenant said to me I am going to live here, and I am not going to pay you, Talked with lawyer, and he said laws are in her favor. Gave advice to drive her out. Was a 3 month process, but she left. Wait up what the frick. During grad school I rented my car out for maybe 6 months on relay rides. Now called Duro. It went great for a long time. 40 bucks a day buys people a small Nissan sedan. I live in Chicago and people would use it to drive home to Ohio or Michigan or Wisconsin. I work and live downtown and use CTA to get from A to B. And it's no problem. One girl is even a repeat customer. She's a makeup artist and uses it to get to wedding gigs in the burbs. Then I'll lend it out to a hot young chick for 3 days. Third day she asks for an extension with some BS excuse. Whatever I'll take the money. Next day she returns it and go to get the keys and she shows my the back bumper. It's bold in wood on the driver's side. I'm not really sure how you make that happen unless someone hits you going very solely or you're back in an odd direction into a hydrant. And tries to sob story me. I take the keys and lodge a complaint. Use Toro's up to get it fixed. As I drive I notice the smell of weed in my car and eventually find an unfamiliar lighter under my seat that says flick my big. All the while I'm getting sob stories from this girl because it's the holidays and she won't be able to pay the bills. If I finalize the complaint because Toro is going to charge her like $500 of the $800 they are going to pay for my new bumper. Be you hotboxed my car and wrecked the bumper. Life has consequences. I should have charged you more. I rent my pad close to the beach on airbnb. Every year there's a music festival and I stay clear of it. Last year I forgot to lock the dates and got an instant booking. They said they were 8. They were 11. 
they didn't have enough garden furniture and took the mid-century modern style chairs on the garden. Then they left for the concert and it rained. One star. I work at a landlord tenant law firm. Tenants in rent stabilized buildings that rent out their apartments via Airbnb often get evicted by my office. I work in property management, and we have that right in the lease that you can't sublet via things like Airbnb. We've had to send several notices to people and I think evicted at least one over it. Now that I think about it, all the people we've busted for doing that have been in FTA units, rent controlled maximum income unit. A friend I was with received a call from a distraught old school buddy, lived in a rural town, who had just driven past her rental house to find the cops raiding it. So she stops her car naturally to find WTF is going on. Turns out the renters weren't even living in the house they were growing weed in every room and knocked out bits of the ceiling and walls to feed their hydroponic system set up. Sorry bad explanation. Basically the house was wrecked and filled with holes but they managed to arrest the fake tenants. The school buddy was upset and rung her friend, who I was with, to unburden herself as she was literally standing outside her car going what are they going to do next, police, and holy crap, holy crap, it was like a play by play description. My friend is an uber driver, apparently he wasn't paying attention and some guy jerked off in the back seat, no I have no idea how it's possible to not notice something like that, but anyway. So he had to clean what was like 14 gallons of jizz out his car. The dude was like part horse or something. I went to a house party for some guy's birthday and he held it in an airbnb. It was in Calgary in 2015. I wasn't sure whose property it was until it appeared on the news but the amount of people at the party was far too many for the small home. The birthday boy was advertising the party for weeks as a mansion party, much to the surprise of everyone upon arriving. The place was absolutely trashed. Not me but my aunt has an airbnb and had a lady and her husband stay at her place for a month or so and in the last week the lady gave birth in the upstairs bathroom floor. It was disgusting. Not airbnb, but my parents rented out their house when they moved two states away. Everything was fine for a few months until the renter started being late on rent every time, and then eventually not paying. Then they found out utilities hadn't been paid in months and were in the renter's dead son's name. Because of squatter's rights, took 5 months and multiple trips in a car back and forth from Oklahoma to Colorado to get the house empty. By the time the renter was finally out we had to rent a huge dumpster for all the contents of the house. Replace the stolen appliances. Replace all of the carpet and tile. Oh and remove all the needles from HUs. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.